Ha! I like the fact that I use arcane technologies. Oh, hello, folks! Welcome back for I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. And here I have a very quick announcement. I will be doing, well, I don't know if it's going to be me. But we'll see. El Vagabundo. Iho del Hobo. Might be doing Victory Road for me. So we'll see. He might also have a little cooking show on. So we shall see what happens. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about... Oh, wait a second. Before I start, as always, Trala! So good to see you again, sir. See her. You know what I've given, I've given out recently? You, sir, Trala-la. You're that luchador on a forklift. And with that being said, it's time to talk about some AEW because I was on tonight. Wow, AEW starts off hot. Just, they start off the show, and I want to see if I can get this done somewhat quickly. If I can get to the gym. And, yeah, that would be nice. Get home and sleep for a change. So I was busy today. Eh, I'm not as busy tomorrow, but that's okay. But, yeah, so, where was I? Oh, yeah, AEW. AEW starts off with Darby Allen taking on... Oh, Alan Starks. Why, oh, Ricky Starks. Why did I put Alan down? I don't know. Yep, so um, Darby Allen, first thing he does, he, he slaps Ricky Starks. Or, I'm sorry, Starks actually slaps Darby Allen. Bad move. No, no, no. Yep, uh, Darby Allen hits a drop kick on him. Darby then jumps. And you saw my move. You stole the hobo choke. The guillotine choke. A front chancery, whatever Excalibur. Whatever nonsense that Excalibur says it is, it isn't. It's the hobo choke. Or I guess you could call it the guillotine choke because that's like the MMA name for it. But, that, but whatever it was, you stole that. You son of a bitch. Um, let's see here. So after a while of wrestling, Cage shows up. He's a beast. Must be sitting in a hotel in Jacksonville. That's where Melissa Santos looked like she was from. Indeed. Then, let's see here. Then um, Will Hobbs comes in. Cage and Will Hobbs, they brawl to the back. Next week, it's going to be Will Hobbs versus the machine Brian Cage. Uh, Starks. You know, the wrist drags, the floor. Darby Allen like, flops. Whenever Darby Allen takes a bump to the floor, it always looks like it looks extra painful. Is that or he or he's all like I'm sure he has muscle, but yeah, he's falling on like muscle and bone. Like me. There's a lot of cushion in certain places. But yeah, um then there was a chop. Those chops of Ricky Sparks look amazing though. And then he drives the knee into the forehead. Uh, Darby Allen hits a Lucha Destroyer in the Fujiwara armbar. Then he does a double Fujiwara. Uh, they trade slaps for a little bit. Darby Allen did the over-the-top stunner, which is pretty good. The flying spear. 
Oh, wow. I don't know what it was. Darbion tried to do something off the ropes. Ricky Starks launched himself into a spear. That looked amazing. However, that only led to a, I think, two count. Then, let's see, that was, it was no avalanche, Rochambeau, Darby Allen shove, Ricky Starks down, hit the coffin drop. That was the end of that. Uh, Darby Allen wins. It was. A, I'll tell you what. It was a good match. It was exciting. It told a tale. They did this. They didn't really necessarily need Brian Cage to come come out, but I guess with the Will Hobbs thing, they're trying to try and boost Will Hobbs. Ah, uh, he's more of a West Coast guy. I haven't heard much of him in the Jones already, which is not good. But I'll tell you what. For the most part, this was a good. Solid match. Cheeseburger match. Then we have um, Cody speaks out. Uh, talking about his dog collar match. He's like, yeah, no way. No way I'm not going to miss this. Uh, so he says yes to the dog collar match. Brody Lee shows up. There's a brawl. Uh, Brandy hits a send on hunt to everyone. Her and Anna Jay get into it. Yeah, whatever. Brandy just needed her spotlight. That's all. Uh, then Tony Schiavone starts to interview FCR. And Matt Jackson shows up. He's super. Matt Jackson, why did you super kick Tony Schiavone? Of all people, it's not he did anything. Boo, Young Bucks. Boo. Boo, the Young Bucks need to be. Deleted. Delete. Delete. Because they're obsolete. Obsolete. Delete. Yes. All the above. Then the next match we have SC. SC. You. Taking on FTR. I'll tell you what, this is a great match. Hangman Hand Page was on commentary. After about like five minutes, he's like, Wait, Miss. Miss. I need a drink. So yeah, he, he knocks back that whiskey like it's water. I hope that isn't whiskey, or if it is, I hope he has someone driving him. He was knocking it back at a pretty good pace. Uh, this match shows off arm drag to hammerlock reverse to drop to hold. Very technical match. Once you start doing these technical wrestling moves, you know you'll at least have this guy's attention. Then from there, the rope running is so good by both men on um, the double shoulder tackle and the clothesline. I'll tell you what, I can run the ropes a couple times, but then I'm like gassed. I'd be like, <sighs> but yeah, these guys can do it all day long. Again, <laughs> the great heel tactics by Kazarian. He just kind of flops down. He points a finger at Christopher Daniels. Said, he, he grabbed my ankle. He grabbed me. Ref, go no longer. So that's like, I guess so. You, Christopher Daniels, you're out of here. So Christopher Daniels got tossed in the heel lining tactic. Pretty classic trope. It's always good to see. It's always good to see heels act like heels. That's what makes FTR look so good. Even though they have a lot of heel miscues, though. They gotta watch that, because that's becoming that, that near comic level. If it's one of those things that keep on happening, you're kind of going to expect it, and you'll be like, eh, they're just doing that again. It, it doesn't make them look as cohesive when they start, like, like landing on each other. It just looks bad. It's, it's one thing if it happened, like, once or every so often in a big money bag for, like, a pay-per-view. But when it's on TV time after time after time, it does get kind of old. Now, let's see here. Again, SCU's double teams still the best. Side rushing leg sweep, that was really good. Uh, Kazarian eventually gets a hot tag in because um, Scorpio Sky gets speed up a little bit. The Northern Lights prawn clutch double pin. That's pretty good. That, that kind of... You need to leave that stuff a little bit in the indies, though. Or at least, if you're going to be... I don't know, Kazarian could get away with it. He's, he's been around forever, though. 
So I can't complain too much. Again, SCU, the double arm drag, into the double backdrop, the dragon suplex, um, the multiple pin attempts. Page, Page orders. He's like, okay, bring, bring, bring on some more. And Page gets better the, the more he drinks. I don't know what it is about him. Then uh, FTR goes to cheat. They grab the hands with Tully. And the ref kicks the hands. Classic ref move to stop the interference. Although, you know what he should have done? He should have tossed Tully Blanchard too, but he didn't. Tully's just an old guy. So Then Tully eventually does help with the assisted pin. FTR win. I mean, minor quibbles about this match. Surf and turf match. Then we have Chris Jericho taking on Isaiah Cassidy of Private Party. Let me make sure I don't say. I think I've said Street Party and Private Profits. So, yeah, this is Isaiah Cassidy of Private Party. It's so hard because they look very similar. They have, this, for the most part, the same gimmick. Um, Isaiah just goes to town to start off on Chris Jericho. Until Chris... Because it looks like... Uh, he suckered Chris Jericho in. La Mahistra. Again, whenever I see classic wrestling moves like that. Wrestling moves of my youth. I always applaud those. He stands over Chris. Very, very, very bad idea. Chris is too, Chris Jericho is way too much of a veteran. He gets he gets punched right in the face for his efforts. And they go to the outside. Chris Jericho. Luther starts to beat up Chris Chris Jericho. What's up with that? Like I've never seen or heard of Luther before. Really, he came here to AEW and and uh, Sir Pentico. Oh, he reminds me, I forget if he was one of the Osiris portal. Because that's kind of who he reminds me of a little bit. Good for him if he managed to, to get out of Shikara. Although the Osiris portal, they were an amazing tag team. Their work in just basic tag team matches. Um, Osiris portal versus the Colony was great. Uh, their King of Trios matches were so fun to watch. And they were great in Chikara. I think they wrestled for a time in CZW. They really stayed in the independence. So, but they were great to see. Maybe that's him. I honestly don't know. Uh, and then Isaiah hit a Swanton onto Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho hit a pop up drop. Um, Hagar trips up Isaiah, Isaiah Cassidy. Run off the ropes. Uh, Chris tries to run into Isaiah Cassidy on the turnbuckle, but no. Chris Jericho winds up straddling the turnbuckle. Isaiah. It was like a bottom rope lethal injection. Probably the lamest lethal injection I think I've ever seen. Off the bottom rope. Unless they're like Nikki Cross, Alexa Bliss, Shotzi Blackheart. You really shouldn't be using that bottom rope. I mean, I guess you could use it to, even then, I mean, you can use it a little bit to slingshot yourself, I guess. But again, if you're not Shotzi Blackheart, you, you have no, Rey Mysterio uses it a little bit. But yeah, Rey Mysterio is short. Again, Shotzi Blackheart's tiny. Nikki Cross, I don't even know who's tall. That's a good question. Who's actually taller between the two? Shotzi Blackheart or Nikki Cross? Who knows? The, so there's a uh, bottom rope lethal injection. Um, he, then he, then then Isaiah Cassidy became a move thief because he stole the line salt and the code breaker. So he's a move thief. However, Chris Jericho hits the Judas effect. Yep, that's the end of the match. Chris Jericho obviously wins. Uh, Inner Circle come in. They, they just initiate a brawl. So it was good stuff. Not Nothing truly terrible about it. The cheeseburger match. Then you have Kip Sabian and Miro. 
talk about the bachelor party and oh boy this is dull not entertaining and boring at least with impact when they did the wedding of brian cage there was a real true comedy aspect of it i think AEW is going for that same thing but they're just falling flat kip Sabian is not the person to do comedy nor is Miro. And, I mean, what's... The, like, honestly, it was a bachelor party at, like, Dave and Buster's? Boo. And then they meet whoever. I forget who it was. Then we have Dasha and Orange Cassidy and Best Friends conducting an interview. FCR comes in and says, yeah, we saved you from yourself. And then... Check to other called Mooney still. Like, really? Again, going harkening back to his days at Pro Wrestling Girl. So the next match we have is Orange Cassidy versus Ten. Oh. Ten. 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 Yeah, ten of the Dark Order. Uh they're they're greeted by Sean Spears at the very like beginning. That's kind of creepy. I can't see them having the four horsemen. Sean Spears just doesn't fit in that role of a horseman for whatever reason. Maybe that I'm old and I remember the four horsemen in their many iterations. Sean Spears just doesn't look that intimidating. And when you know his girl, his, his wife is Peyton Royce, you're like, meh. So is Orange Cassidy taking on 10... Of the Dark Order. Uh, Ten just starts. Ten, first of all, takes the glasses. For Orange Cassidy puts them on John Silver. Then he has a flat liner, a closed line, a delayed vertical suplex. It looked like Ten was going to beat him up. Uh, the Dark Order then go on the outside of the ring, hug it out. And this is where this match went downhill. Um, Orange Cassidy started to just come back a little bit against the Dark Order. Did a did his, uh, flippy dive onto them. Back in the ring, takes off the elbow pad, the orange punch, the the uh, the beach breeze, whatever it's called. Wins the match. I don't know. I don't get it. Um, uh, to, to me, it's a ham sandwich. And then we have probably... Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know what it is about the AEW women. They're not good. It was Britt Baker taking on Red Velvet. Yeah. You can just tell by the name. You know who's winning. Or, or, at, least, or at least you know who's losing. So Britt Baker, she, she just beats on, on, on Red for a while. Um, eventually Red does do a, a wheelbarrow bulldog. Catches Britt Baker off guard. I'll tell you what, neither of those women have any have any booty for some reason. JR tried to talk up the fact that Britt Baker's arms and shoulders are, are looking bigger. That's not saying much. Her, when I saw when I saw Britt Baker live, when I went to AEW, and eventually I do have to go back to an AEW match up in Jacksonville and might share up my friend. But I'll tell you what. I saw her, I'm like. How does she not get broken in half every day? Because she's skinny. Like I would tell, who's not at, who's not at the place anymore. But I would talk with um, Rebecca. It's like, yeah, I saw Britt Baker. Say, like, oh yeah, she has a six pack. You know why she? You know why? You, you know why Britt Baker has a six pack of abs? Because there's nothing else there. And literally with her. <sighs> to say her arms look bigger doesn't really mean anything. I mean, bigger than what? Bigger than just freaking the, the, the humorous? I mean, yeah, they're bigger than that, but I don't, I don't know. I've never liked skinny women. I've never liked, I correct myself, scrawny women. I like that nice, like, in-between woman. She has some curves, but I don't fit in her shadow. 
Big women, no. They, they don't do it for me. If I fit if I fit in your shadow, lady, you're too big. If I can see each individual rib and your vertebrae, honey, you're too small. I got a nice in between part. I, I don't. I'm I'm weird. Like I don't know. It might just be me. Maybe I've been dropped on my head during too many wrestling matches, or what? Or I've seen. I've been staring at a DOS screen way too long. I digress though. Um, then. Britt Baker uh, kind of kicks Red Velvet into the ropes. She had a couple sling blades. Swing, fisherman, neck breaker. That was it. Uh, Rebel. It was much more attractive than Britt Baker. Comes in, gives her the black dentist gloves. Locked jaw for a little added effect. Ah, it was soup. Whatever. Oh, yeah, Britt Baker won. Like, I really had to say that between those two names. Britt Baker or Red Velvet? Guess who's winning? Yeah. Adam Cole, baby! Is winning. <laughs> uh, let's see. Then we have Eddie Kingston co comes out. He calls out the refs. Like, why'd you stop the match? Like, dude, you're out. I have to stop it. I, I have to save you from yourself. That actually makes sense. And it's a safety factor. Because if that was really a chokehold, I want to say it's like... Like, 20 seconds in a blood choke, and then you start to have, like, le legit brain damage because you're just cutting off the supply of oxygen, cutting off the blood flow, which is the supply of oxygen to the brain. Yeah, like, if you're in that, like, way too long, no bueno. Generally, even in MMA, as soon as, like, the guy, like, goes limp, and his eyes just just roll into his head. He's the ref's like, no, 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 no. He will. Like I've seen, Big John McCarthy literally pull people off of a choke because of that. He, they they don't fool around with that. Like yeah, it's one thing to be to be put to sleep. It's another thing to stay asleep. So yeah. Um, so Eddie Kingston says, yeah, John Moxley. You know what? I'm gonna pick your fight. You're gonna fight the butcher. Oh my god. I do not want to see the butcher in a dark alley. He looks like someone. Like, literally, he, he looks like an old-timey butcher from, like, London, England. That just, like, goes around, he walks home, like, with the cleaver tied to his apron, and just walks home like a bloody mess. Like, he goes to the pub. He, no, I, I don't want to see him in any British pub I ever visit. Man, it's terrifying looking. Looks like he got some more tattoos, too, which adds to his mystique, which is probably a good thing. But still, not a person you want to meet in a dark alley. Perfect wrestling match for John Moxley, though. Uh, John Moxley versus the Butcher's Necks. Mox. Poor Mox. He just gets beat up. He turns around very slowly. He's a Butcher. He's too, butcher's too strong for Mox. Um, goes after... He, those chops. Wow. Those are not knife edge chops. Those are cleaver chops. Uh, the Butcher does a step over toe hold. Again, I love it when I see old school wrestling moves. They tell a great story. Mox's knees are giving out. He didn't have to fight this. Mox goes for a kit to the gut. Uh, does a neck breaker. Then he tries for the Juju Kitami, trying to more, more technical moves. So in this match, John Moxie was a more technical wrestler. Uh, the Butcher was just a butcher. Like Abdullah the Butcher, but minus the fork. So to the forehead. Yeah, that would be bad. Uh, then Butcher transitions to a few moves into a uh, single leg crab, really working on the knees. The Butcher, then he just, then, then when Moxie tried to turn around, he just fell onto poor Moxie and just started to rain down heavy fist after fist after fist. Ouch. Again, those just look vicious. Those look vicious. Um, again, the Butcher's doing the, the knee manipulation. He tried for the stretch mouth work, couldn't get it for whatever reason. You have to have some kind of coordination and some decent strength for the stretch muffler. Uh, then they do some yay boos. Mox sends the butcher into the bike route when they're getting the outside. Uh, tell you what, Mox had a pile driver. Pile driver, nope, end match. That should, that should be it. No one should ever get up from the pile driver. Maybe, well, maybe the butcher could. 
I mean, as long as it's like a long two kick out, like no one else really should, though. Uh, see, the butcher hits a cross by you. One cross by you looked really weak. The ones at the top rope look better. Eventually, John Moxley has a paradigm shift and nails in the, and puts in the captain the hook. And the butcher taps out. I'll tell you what, that was actually really good, though. That was a surf and turf match. I'll tell you what, AEW started off hot, but God, their women's division is awful. That whole Britt Baker thing makes the the whole card seem so long and drawn out. It's like, why? 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 Oh, let's see. A little bit more about the rest of the week. Tomorrow, El Vagabundo is going to be coming in. Or Ijo del Vagabundo. I don't know. know. Seite Ocho will be here. He'll give his predictions on Victory Road. Um, I will be doing the typical Friday SmackDown review show. So I'll be off. El, El Vagabundo will be here. And then El Vagabundo is also going to be back on Saturday. Intriguing. He's going to be doing the Victory Road show, and then probably that Monday, in addition to the Raw show, I'll be showing you how to cook with El Vagabundo Dos Hobo. So I think as a homage to all the things that Taco Bell took off the menu, boo Taco Bell.